GT wings or drift wings or big gay wings. Not keen on that one, don't like that too much. Um, but yeah, big daft spoilers or wings on MX-5s. I decided to look for a second-hand wing from a company that I thought produced something functional and that was well-developed. Eventually stumbled across a, a Voltex wing, which um, for me is pretty much the pinnacle. In terms of mounting, I just put it as far back on the on the boot lid as I could. Uh, nothing more to it than that. Figured the air's cleanest at the rearmost part. It's got some flat mounting feet on it. So I just positioned them as far to the back as I could do. Uh, and that was as much science that went into the, uh, the, the placement of the wing. Okay, so the all important performance testing. Uh, I tested it at Cadwell Park on my uh, S2000 powered MX-5 and did a session without the wing first and a session with the wing afterwards. Uh, everything, all the other conditions were identical um, and there was an enormous shift in the balance of the car uh, at mid to high speeds. So here's a video of the car before the wing went on. You'll see that it's, it's pretty loose at the rear uh, there's lots of oversteery moments, both at low and, and higher speed as well. Um, and I was getting used to the setup, so it was um, it wasn't some. I'm not used to driving the car like that, um, and so for me it was it was a learning curve. Um, but you can see that the balance of the car is is toward oversteer. It's it's quite twitchy. with the wing, fitted the wing straight afterwards and went back out on track and as you'll see from the video it's it's quite a different car. Um, at low speeds you can still see there's that tendency towards oversteer, um, the mechanical balance of the car hasn't changed uh, but at high speeds the rear is planted um, particularly through uh, coppice, the fast left-hander that goes uphill you can see that the rear end is just planted with the wing, whereas before, quite frequently, it would jink out, it would need a bit of correction going through there, which is which is fairly hairy, um, given that you're traveling at, I don't know, 90 mile an hour or something, on quite a narrow track. Hopefully here you'll also see that, that I can be a little bit more committed with it. Uh, almost take liberties with it knowing that that rear end is stuck. Brake a little bit late to carry a bit more speed into the corners. Uh, so hopefully the video will demonstrate well the change in balance from not having the wing and the oversteer to, to having the wing and, and more of an understeer at, at mid to high speeds.
penalty that you get when you add a rear wing and put this great big thing in the airflow behind the car is that you almost always increase the drag. So there's, there's normally a, a terminal speed penalty. So you add speed around the corners, um, but the straight line performance normally suffers. Um, extremely happily in my situation, um, with the wing I've used and the position that it's mounted on the MX-5 with the hardtop, uh, it's not changed the terminal speed at all. Um, I'll run a little video so you can see a direct comparison. I've got two corner exit speeds, the same on Park Straight, or sorry, out of Charlie's 2. Um, corner exit speeds are the same, everything else is the same, but the terminal speeds are also the same. One's without the wing, one's with the wing. In fact, what you'll probably be able to see in the video with the wing is that the terminal speed, I think, is one mile an hour faster. Um, I think it creeps up to that terminal speed just as the as the video without the wing is also at its terminal speed. So I think minutely, I mean, we'll put that down to, to error. You know, there's, there's most likely that that's just one mile an hour either side can be put down to error, but it, it shows pretty well that there really isn't any drag penalty from fitting the wing on the car.